Let's talk about cellular respiration. Now, this is our equation for cellular respiration. It's glucose plus oxygen gas react to form carbon dioxide, water vapor, and energy. This equation might look familiar to you because it's actually the opposite of photosynthesis. So in our bodies, when we eat food, uh, eventually that food is converted into glucose and we can use that glucose to then make energy in the form of ATP. Now this equation for cellular respiration, it doesn't happen just all in one go like this. This is actually a process. There's three different cycles to this process. They're called glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and then the electron transport chain. I actually have an undergraduate degree in biochemistry, so I at one time had all of those different steps memorized, and they are lengthy, let me tell you. But the overall reaction that we get here is glucose plus oxygen reacts to form CO2, carbon dioxide, plus water vapor, plus energy. Now, in order to kind of relate this to what we've been learning, let's balance this equation really fast. So we have carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens. Um, if we count our atoms of carbon, we have six on the reactant side and one on the product side. For hydrogens, we have 12 on the reactant side and two on the product side. And then for oxygen, I have six plus two or eight on the reactant side and I have two plus one or three on the product side. So Remember I told you that if we have water in this chemical reaction, we want to save that to the oxygens and hydrogens to balance last. So let's do carbon first. We have six on the reactant side and only one on the product side. So I'm gonna put a six in front of this carbon dioxide here. And then that will change both the carbons and the oxygens. So now I have six carbons and we're balanced there, which is great. And I now have six times two, which is 12, plus one more, which is 13 oxygens. Now it's kind of a weird number to have of oxygens. So let's balance hydrogen first. Um, we have 12 on the reactant side and only two on the product side. So in order to get 12 on the product side as well, I'm gonna put a six in front of here. Let's do that in a different color so it's a little bit easier to see. I'm gonna put a six in front of this uh, water, our H2O, and then that's going to change both the hydrogens and the oxygens. So I have six times two, which is 12 hydrogens now, and now my hydrogens are balanced. And then I now have six times two, which is 12, plus six, 12 plus six is 18 oxygens. So now I have 18 oxygens. Now, I want to now, the last but not least, I want to balance my oxygens. So it looks like I have eight oxygens over here on the, uh, reactant side. Now I don't want to put anything in front of this one because that would then change the number of carbons, change the number of hydrogens, and then I'm going to have to keep balancing all over again and that's just going to be annoying because I already have my carbons and my hydrogens balanced. But look at this! I have oxygen all by itself so I'm going to put something in front of that oxygen in order to also get 18 oxygens out of that as well. So. I already have six oxygens over here, so that, that six oxygen, I wanna subtract that from 18 to then see what I need to put in front of that oxygen gas. So 18 minus six is 12. So if I want 12 oxygens from this oxygen gas right here, I know that I have to multiply that by six in order to get 12. So let's tally that up just to make sure. We have six plus six times two, which is 12. Six plus 12 is 18, All right? So now we are good on the oxygen front as well. Again, let's tally up those um, atoms one more time. I have six carbons on my reactor reactant side. I have six carbons on my product side. We are good there. I have 12 hydrogens on my reactant side. I have 12 hydrogens on my product side, so we are good there. And then last but not least, I have six plus 12, which is 18 oxygens on my reactant side, and I have 12 plus six oxygens on my product side, and we are good and balanced there. Now, I want you to ask yourself, why is it that we have to balance these equations? Why do I have to have the same number of carbons on the reactant side and the product side? Why do I have to say, have the same number of hydrogens, the same number of oxygens, the same number of total atoms? 
Now remember, the reason we do this is because of the law of conservation of mass or matter. Right? We know that matter cannot be created or destroyed. So here, I can't just create atoms out of nowhere. I can't just create uh, hydrogens out of nowhere. I can't just destroy atoms out of nowhere either. So those, that total number of atoms, the total number of carbons, total number of hydrogens, total number of oxygens, those have to stay the same in this reaction. Now, the other question I have for you is where does this energy come from? It seems to just appear out of nowhere. All right, and we've been learning a lot about endothermic and exothermic reactions. What kind of reaction is this if it's releasing energy? Should have said exothermic. It is exothermic. This is actually a combustion reaction. So we've talked about this before. Now, that energy actually comes in the form of chemical bonds. Remember how we talked about how uh, bonds have potential energy. So there's some bonds that are higher energy bonds than others. What happens here is that the glucose and the oxygen, those bonds are higher energy than the carbon dioxide and the water. So because of that, when those bonds break and then reform, that energy has to be released because they had higher energy in their bonds and now the reactant, sorry, the product uh, bonds are lower. So that energy has to be released as well. So this is your equation for cellular respiration. And this is how we get our energy when we eat food. So we need to be able to get that energy from somewhere. And we get it from glucose and oxygen reacting to form carbon dioxide, water vapor, and energy.